Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushah, Ba'ashim Avrakak, Wadash. Double honor to the apostles of the Great Millstone and salutations to the Yakima that they continue to further this ministry throughout the four corners of the earth. And Shalom to those that are learning and listening and growing thereby, as well as the Brother Mark come. And um, I have this article here, which I find uh, interesting. And it says, Flag Day, students trash the U.S. flag, equates it with war, genocide, and racism. And that's the absolute truth. Now, this woman here, she, I think they walk up, I think the students walk up to this woman with the microphone and she questions them, what do they think about the American flag? And most of the people didn't really um, give the correct answer such as this man gave because um you know as i believe partially the reason why so-called white people don't really speak too strongly about what occurred during the 16 17 18 and even the 1900s it's a shameful part of their history and that's something that they don't really want to talk about and and what it does is it makes them look like the villain you know and and the the narrative which is what they've been comfortable with and still are comfortable with is that we are the villains, that we are the bad people. The Native American Indians, beginning with them because they were the first ones that came to dwell in the land of America today, which is called America today. Um, and they've slaughtered them. I mean, we could talk about the founding fathers. We could talk about what occurred during the 18th century when the government... Um, which was free from England, the American government, that is, because they were free from England, they were able to get away and just started slaughtering the people that inha already inhabited the land, which were the natives. And then the same century, they, they, uh, they enslaved us, they lynched us, they did all kind of evil towards our people on the soils of America. So, this student here, he gave the correct answer and he specified why he thinks that the American flag, as he equated it with violence, war, and genocide, and racism, because the country was built on that. You know, the country wasn't built on goodwill. It wasn't built in justification and righteousness. It was built on violence. It was built on genocide. It's like, uh, I was watching a little bit of the video and he went off when he said, well, we did take some or little of Native American land. No, you didn't take some or little. You took all of the land. You took all of the land and you slaughtered thousands of, of natives. And when you actually when you actually combine how many people which was killed in the land, it, it goes up into the hundreds of millions. Okay, and then you got to add into how many people died, which were um, suffering during the the transatlantic slave trade, which is our people, the Negroes, how many of them died? It's about, what, 60 million of them. So when you put all of those numbers together and you add them, 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 them numbers up, we're talking about almost, what, 240 million people. So it took 240 million deaths of the Israelites to make America for what it is today. So that these so-called white people can then later on enjoy the fruits of their labor, which was obviously great violence. So anyway, let's get into this. Flag Day. Students trash the U.S. flag, equates it with war, genocide, and racism. Uh, with today, June 14 being Flag Day, Campus Reform visited the university of Texas and Dallas to see what students think their country's flag represents. Reporter Philly Jacobson was subject to some disturbing comments with many saying they feel the U.S. flag is a global symbol of war and genocide, and it is, because what I'm also thinking about is the amount of time America's been, been at war versus the amount of time they've been at peace. And when you actually do the research of going into the uh, revolutionary wars, you're going to find out that America's been in war more than it's been at peace. Okay, and America's been at war 240 plus times 
no, 200 and I believe it was 220 times have been at war. And uh, most of those wars were taking place from the 1700s all the way up to like, what, World War One, World War Two, and, and there's still um, ongoing wars to this very moment in time. And um, ever since America has been established, I would say around what, the late 1700s, around 1776, when you had the, the Masonic Brother uh, formulated their group together and was founded right around that same exact time that's when you had those revolutionary wars that begun but when you when you actually um add up the amount of years they've been at war it's about 240 plus years now so this whole system this whole system and i'm not in america i'm, I'm in the uk but this whole society is is definitely influenced um the countries within Europe too, you know, obviously America is not the most powerful this country, but it's the most influential. So influentially we're actually under the same vibration that the Americans are under that, that actually live in America. So we're under the Babylonian system as a whole, which is what we believe it to be. We believe that America is, is also known as old daughter Babylon, which will be destroyed because of what, what, what it has done and not, the it concerning the land but the empire and the people that rule the empire how they got the empire so anyway it says um a lot of things come to mind first of all war second of all we've also taken a bit of land from native american Indians. no you didn't take a bit of land you took all of the land there were native americans that so-called native american indians which are, which are from the tribe of god and you have the ones down south which is uh the tribe of uh, reuben and they occupied all of the lands, which is called America today. So they took all of the land, not little of the land, not a bit of the land, but all of the land by great slaughter. And we could talk about the founding fathers. We could talk about people like Andrew Jackson, which he's known as the Indian killer. We can also talk about uh, uh, George Washington. All of, those, all of those founding fathers, they were all responsible for the uh, the genocide of the so-called Native American Indians, which is of the tribe of Gad of the nation of Israel, and then this is the same people that were responsible in enslaving, taking one people from one portion of land and bringing them into slavery against their will into the into the New World, which is the Americas, or more in particular North America, and uh, what was done to our people while we were in hardcore slavery, a whole lot of atrocities were done. You know, inhumane things was done on the land of America. Lynchings were occurring from the 1800s, even to the time of the First World War, and even to World War II and past that. So ever since America's been sitting up, there's been violence. There's been, there's always been violence with America. There's always been um, wars, as the in, as the individual said. And I and I understand why he said that we've taken a bit of land because it's embarrassing, man. It's a, it's a goddamn shame. You know, and they ought to be ashamed of themselves. So it says a lot of things come to mind. First of all, war. Second of all, we've also taken a bit of land from Native Americans. One student commented, adding, it's just really terrible that we've done all of these things. And this flag kind of reminds me of that, of all of the sins we've committed against each other. That's all I got to read right there. I don't got to read any more. So this individual here, he, he spoke the truth. He told it like it was. That's what he felt in his heart, and you better believe that's how most Edomites feel. But when, when, when given the question of what do they think of the American flag, they give different answers, and they know the answer to give, but they just don't want to give that answer as well as this individual did, because it's a, it's a shameful um, part of their history, and it reminds them that they're the villains of the, of the earth. Not the so-called black man, which is running around claiming he's a gangster or, he th or he's a thug. Um, neither is the so-called Mexican, which is doing the same thing, or the North American Indians. They're not the villains. The, the, the original villains of the earth are the so-called white people, which are nothing more 
than the, than the biblical Edomites that the Bible speaks about, which are also known as the wicked that the Bible speaks about as well. They're the real villains of the earth. Their history proves it, and that's why they don't really feel comfortable talking about it, because if you were to really talk about it and to really investigate the history of slavery and and uh, and, and prior before slavery, the, 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 uh, the atrocities which was done to the natives, it gets hella ugly, don't it? And that's just the thing with these Edomites. They, they, they don't mind investigating so many other things. But when it, comes to the, when it comes to slavery, they don't really want to go there with that because it's going to remind them that they're the ones. They're the villains. They've always been the villains. They were the villains in the past and then the villains today. So now let's get some scriptures. Let's get Ecclesiastes 41 verse 7. It says the children will complain of an ungodly father because they shall be reproached for his sake. And that's what this is. You know, he spoke his mind because it's bothering these devils, man. Like the shit that they did to our people and the shit that they did all around the world is coming back to haunt them mentally. And there's a lot of panic going on among these devils, man. They're not as comfortable, they're, excuse me, they're not as confident as they used to be. Every time you see average devil, they got their heads down. Especially where I'm from. And they don't feel comfortable. They don't have a pompous attitude anymore. They have their heads down. You know, they just, they look like, they look like they've been conquered to themselves. And the reason being is because people are waking up to their asses. That's really what it is. So he just spoke what he was really feeling, feeling inside. And as well as the, the people that this um, woman came across, they knew the answer, but they didn't want to give that answer because it hurts to be remindful of the, of the dirt that they did to the natives of the land, which are nothing, which are nothing more than Israelites, and also what they did to so-called black people. And they got the nerve to say, why is there so much hate among so-called black people? Whoa, look at, the, look at your goddamn history. And look what you're doing to us right now. <clears throat> anyway. Let's go and read this. This is um, Isaiah 41. Verse uh, 21. It says, Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. So they're going to get slaughtered. Because they are their forefathers coming back. And more in particular, the, 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 the entities that will slaughter these devils, beginning with the, the, um, the international bankers and the people all the way down from the least to the greatest of these Edomites, they're, they're going to be slaughtered. Man. When the Lord comes back with the angels, these devils are going to be slaughtered. And I have to read Revelations. Uh, Revelations. Chapter 13. So we're going to pull that up. Revelations chapter 13, uh, verse 9. It says, If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, and he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. And here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And that's what they did to the native, the native, the so called Native American Indians, excuse me which are indeed the tribe of Gad of the nation of Israel and also the tribe of Reuben down south, especially more in particular Florida. They slaughtered them. So the Lord is going to repay them back in slaughtering them when he makes the second return with the angels and the men among us that believe in Yahweh Bashmi al Shai, when our, change, when our change comes and we get that spiritual power, we're going to be slaughtering these devils too. Okay? But it's all going to begin when the angels and the Heavenly Father comes back. That time, that's when the slaughter is going to begin. So, um, let me go back to uh, Isaiah 14. And we're going to read, actually, you know what? Let's read this too. We're going to read Isaiah 14 
verse 2 says, And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. So we're going to have them in slavery as well as they had us in slavery. But first, we have to conquer them with the sword as well as they've conquered us with the sword. As you did all empires in the past, all of the empires of the past conquered other empires and enslaved the nations that occupied a once was great empire and brought them under, under tribute. So that's how our, our society is going to be set up. We're going to pr pretty much get the people that troubled us and trouble them and subdue them eventually so that they can basically be our, our slaves and that eventually they can be tributaries unto us. All right. So we're going to repay them for the damages that they have done unto us. Bottom line. So um, let's move somewhere else. And what I also want to um show you brothers too. I want to show you brothers this article here that I have. Really, it's not really an article. It's a website, which they show you in this website of um people that died, and uh, the people that died are in the soils. Their bodies have disintegrated. As you know, you die, your body disintegrates back to the earth, and they found the uh, the dust of the bodies that died, which is you know whether it was them being lynched or you know other things that happened to these people. So you have um, as you have the names on these jars, you have Rufus Lazou, um, sounds like a French name, um, Thomaston, Alabama. August 16, 1904. Uh, if we go up here, you have uh, Bernie, Elizabeth Lawrence, Birmingham, Alabama, July the 5th, 1933. Ordis Parham. So these are all of the jars of our forefathers that died because of the lynchings. And they found their soils where they were lynched at. And their flesh is in those soils. So now I have to read Numbers 33, verse 32. Three, actually. Numbers 35, verse 33. So you shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood is the fault of the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. So the way that that land will be cleansed. And really, technically, that land is going to be cleansed because the Lord is going to have different creatures occupy that land. And that's, in the, that's after the book of Isaiah 13, where it talks about desert-like creatures inhabiting that land because it's going to be a desert. So the Lord is going to clean, dissolve the land for, for the desert-like creatures, <laughs> you know. So yeah, you know, this is this is it right here. You see the the um the soils which within these soils you have the the uh the people that have died, their bodies that have disintegrated in these soils have died because of the lynchings and other things. And all of this is a reminder of what America is truly all about and what is all about right now as as the saying goes, history has a way of repeating itself. And to, and to remember who your enemy is because a lot of our people they still sort of believe but at the same time I have to be honest our people are waking up to these so called white people the reality that these devils are their, their enemies but now Jake is coming to grips of that and they're finding it quite comfortable that that's the case because when you tell average negro Especially years ago that the so-called white man is this and that and the third and he's against you They found it very uncomfortable of, of accepting that but now they're, they're um, comfortable with it now They're listening to us. They're listening to other people and um, It's all coming very clear that these so-called white people never really had your best interests at heart All right 
and eventually they're going to pay for what their forefathers have done. They're going to pay for what their forefathers have done. There's no getting off scot-free. It seemed as though that that was the case, but mm -mm. that's not the case, man. Anyway, so um, with that, I, that's all I have to say with this. I want to give all of the praises to the Most High and the Son. Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim Rakal Kwadash. And hopefully uh, this was edifying. So with that, I say Shalom.